In this month's video we're going on the adventure of making a mechanical subscriber counter for my YouTube channel. Ow, bitch. Ah. Let's go! I think everyone in the world has seen these displays in their life. They're called 7 segment displays, because each number is built up out of 7 segments. And each of these segments can be turned on and off separately. In this case we get the number 0 by turning off segment 4. And we can display the number 1 by only showing segments 3 and 6. Now the thing is, these displays always take up power, even when you're not changing the number around. And I was wondering if there's something we can do about it. So I went looking around online for models and techniques to make it happen. And that search led me to the creator Shiura. Wow! So many crazy good designs, you should really go and check it out. I think a lot of you will recognize this hollow clock. This is actually this person's design. And they also made a very nice mechanical 7 segment display. And that's exactly what we're going to use for this project, because we don't need to reinvent the wheel. So this concept works by using a camshaft. On this shaft there's a bunch of cams that pull and push the different segments into sight or out of sight. And don't worry if you don't fully understand what's happening right now. I will show you exactly how this works later on. For now it's time to 3D print all the parts that we need. The maker of these models said to paint the faces of the segments that come into view, but I just used a different color filament and used some supports to print them. The supports on the camshaft are really annoying to remove. Maybe my 3D printer settings aren't good or anything, but well, I got it done in the end anyway. Now there's a whole bunch of holes that we need to clean up so the excess can come through cleanly. The part you're looking at right now is the part where we mount all the other components into. Here too we need to clean the holes for the axes. After the final cleanup we can start the assembly. I'm lubricating the crap out of all parts that move and this is a mistake. I will come back to this later. We're using filament as the axes for all these segments so they can rotate into or out of view by rotating around the filament. Now it's time to fix the camshaft in place. This is what will actually rotate all the segments. Here you can see me adding lubricant to the filament. We also add the filament axes for the left and right segments. Let's give it a spin. We can use a cheap hobby servo and add the 3D printed gear to it. Now we can actually drive our camshaft with our servo. Here you can see exactly how the camshaft works. I'm writing some code to control all the servos that we need. Now the microcontroller is controlling the movement. Oh. I wanted to put my channel logo on the front of the machine, <laughs> but I accidentally put in PETG filament instead of PLA. But I got it right on the second try. To fit the logo and to fit my custom PCB that I will show in a moment, I adjusted the model for the base frame a little bit. And I printed this on my Makerspace Sofol 3D printer. And it actually left white paint from the print bed on the print. Luckily it doesn't come into view so it's alright for this case. Let's place the logo. Now we can calibrate the servo positions to show the right numbers. So to have the camshaft in the right place to show a correct number. Here you can see it's not calibrated yet. And after tweaking the numbers we get this.
Now that I'm partnered up with PCB Way, I wanted to learn how to design actual PCBs. So I downloaded the software KeyCut and made my first designs. First a schematic, then a PCB, which you can view in 3D, which is really nice. And then I received everything in the mail from PCB Way. Thanks for sponsoring this video. I really like how clean this project is because of these PCBs. Oh, satisfying. Ow, bitch! Ah, fing flux! Jumping onto my hand. Oh, that hurts. There it is. There's this additive in solder wire called flux, and sometimes it boils up and sputters onto your hand, and it really hurts. Any advice on how to prevent this is welcome. Thank you. I made a mistake. I wanted to use self-tapping screws, but now the diameter is too large, so I'm forced to use threaded inserts. Oh well. And another mistake. With the connector attached, the assembly is too high. Like this, it can't stand on any surface. But I have an idea. If I flip the board 180 degrees, I have a bit more space and I can bend these wires so it will fit exactly in place. Ah, I love this part. Cool. All we have left is this to plug in. And then it should work. <laughs> Holy crap, it works. That's so cool. When I started working on this project, I only had 300 subscribers. And then I posted my Tamagotchi video and you guys went nuts and pulled me right to right around 1200 where I'm at now. Unfortunately, one thing I didn't plan is that YouTube reports subscriber counts only in three digits. So this worked perfectly when I had 300 subscribers. It seemed all good. However, once you go over a thousand, three digit means that you don't show every exact number of subscribers. So I can see this in YouTube Studio. So I, I know the exact number. However, I can't get it from the API. So this fourth number shall always be zero. I will only see an update in the subscriber counter every 10 new subscribes. It is what it is, I guess. At this point, I figured we were done. The project was complete, it looked nice, and I could film some glamour shots like these and show them to you. However, something terrible happened. During final recording, I saw one sagging segment. I was like, huh, am I going to ignore this? And then I started investigating. Remember this? I'm lubricating the crap out of all parts that move. I'm lubricating the crap out of all parts that move. All right, let's take it apart and investigate. I removed some of the filament axes and well, what I discovered wasn't pretty. Somehow all the filament axes have become terribly brittle. They're just breaking down in my hands and even when I pull them out. I want to know what happened, so I'm starting an experiment. I'm taking three strands of filament. One will be the control strand. I will do nothing to it. The other one will be in contact with water for a few days. And the third one will be looped up crazily with this super loop stuff. While waiting for the results, I go look for better axes from metal. And here we go, replacing everything. At this point, I was really tired of the project. It's a few days later and the control strand is perfectly fine. It's sort of flexible, doesn't really break. The water strand is also fine. No problems at all. But the looped up strand is totally brittle. So this was our problem. So I guess now we know. Is this something that you guys already knew? Okay, let's reassemble and wrap it up. It's still not perfect, there are some problems with hysteresis, sometimes the numbers don't show up properly, but I'm happy with the result. It's a wearable! <laughs> wow, you made it all the way through the video. You must be a subscriber, if not hit that button right now. Also, I could use your support. Making these videos takes up most of my available time and I really can't keep doing it without your support. So if you want to help out, go to patreon.com slash jensmakeradventures and subscribe. 
You get early access to my videos, you get a behind the scenes view, you get all the project files and music from my videos. And your name gets shown in my videos. Go check it out now, patreon.com slash Jens Maker Adventures. Okay, until next time.